Today I want to look at one particular parable. But before we get started, thank you Henry for reminding me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the blessings you've given us. And Lord, you know that I am just a weak, weak Christian. And that all my strength is in you. Amen. So Lord, I pray that you'll be with me as I give this presentation. That you'll touch my lips. That you'll order my thoughts. And that it won't totally flop. Thank you, Lord, for all these things. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, now we're off on the right foot. <laughs> okay. And then my thing won't work. Hmm. The sermon for today is Lesson Missed. And I have that title for a very good reason. So, and I wish this thing would work today. So hold on a second. Some knucklehead goes in my bag, turns the battery around wrong in my thing all the time. I don't know who's doing this to me. I think it's a joke somebody's playing on me. <laughs> it's making life interesting, so thank you. Now watch, watch now. Uh, it pays to be an electrician. Okay, that beautiful man you see before you is my cousin. Now he's actually my dad's cousin, so he'd be my second cousin. And he is a very good preacher. And here a while back, they had a small revival at my mom and dad's church, uh, Harmony Baptist Church. And he was the chief speaker. And I enjoyed every night. I went every night and enjoyed every night. But when I found the, out the title for the last sermon he gave, I thought, oh no, I don't even know if I want to go. The, the title was Two Seconds or Two Minutes After You Die. I thought, oh no, I know where he's going to go, you know. But I decided to go ahead and go, and I'm telling you, it was still an excellent sermon. Now, I didn't agree with everything, but some of the stuff, or most of the stuff, no, not, not some, most of the stuff he said was, you know, I mean, I could amen it, you know, till I was blue in the face, if that's possible. But the text that he used for a lot of his sermon was, can you guess? No, no, remember, we're talking about parables. Huh? No, Lazarus and the rich man. Or the rich man and Lazarus. I don't know why they, some people say it one way or the other. Yeah, he used Lazarus and the rich man. I mean, if anybody's talk to anybody about what Adventists believe, they've had Lazarus and the rich man brought up to their attention. Yeah. You know, that's the first one, that, or one of the first things they come up with. And so what I want to do today is talk about the lesson that Lazarus and the rich man is actually about. The lesson missed. <laughs> ah, there's the title, just in case you were wondering. A lot of people take the parable of Lazarus and the rich man literally. And now I'm not going to argue that it couldn't be taken literal, but I don't believe personally that it is. I believe it is a parable, a story that teaches a lesson. And that doesn't mean that the story is true, but that the lesson in the story is true. Okay, so it teaches truth. All right. Uh, uh, most people that I talk to think that Lazarus and the rich man is about what actually happens when a person dies. And, um, and and that's pretty well what my cousin was was uh, using it for. And, I mean, I can see the application, obviously, and, and you will too here in a second. But I think what I'm going to tell you makes more sense. And I didn't come up with this. I've heard it from lots of different people. And I'm just kind of pulling it all together. Okay? But anyway, my first answer to uh, the parable of Lazarus and the rich man being a parable... Or, or rather a story that tells you what happens when you die, my first problem is, it's a parable. And that's why we use the memory verse. 
When he taught, when Jesus taught the people, he taught with parables. And in fact, it even says he didn't teach without them. The only people he taught without parables and even explained parables was who? The disciples. Now I want to remind you that that doesn't mean 12 people. That actually means a host of people. Everybody that followed him around, they were his disciples. There were women, uh, there were men. So, I mean, so we're not just talking about 12 guys. Um, that means, now follow me here for a second. That means if you really wanted to know what his parables were about, all you had to do is become his disciple. Am I right? Just say, you know, I want to follow you too. And then you would be in on the parables and what they were about. So that's important for us to think about, I think, because the Scripture says that he taught, he taught in parables because seeing they would not see and hearing they would not hear. So it was like God's way of saying, you know, you don't want to hear it, then you won't hear it. And so that's why it's important to point out that anybody could be Jesus' disciple. He didn't turn anyone away, even Judas, right, the guy that betrayed him. So he didn't turn anybody away from being, you, you could be, obviously you had to be of the house of Israel, but you could be, you know, a, a man, woman, I mean, it didn't matter, okay? So I wanted to point that out real quick. So again, the verse says, without parables spake he not unto them. So the general population, especially guys, the leaders of Israel, he didn't tell them anything unless it was in parable form. Okay? Uh, well, some people argue, and my cousin made a good point. All of Jesus' parables, he said they were true. Uh, you can't really prove that from the Bible. But it is true that all Jesus' parables were about real stuff. You know, tangible things. But I do have evidence from the Bible that not all parables are true stories. They contain truth, but they're not necessarily true. Uh, Judges 9, 17 through 15, go home and look it up, talks about a parable where these trees all get together and they look for a king. And they go, the trees go to this tree and they say, be king over us. And that tree says, no, I can't. I got this to do. You know, and he goes to another tree. And, and finally they end up going to a bramble bush. And the bramble bush, I think, turns them down too, if I remember correctly. And something happens with fire. I'm going from memory. But, so that obviously is not a true story. Trees don't go around looking for kings, do they? Do they? Anybody seen a king? I mean, a, a king looking for a tree. A tree looking for a king. Ah. No, that doesn't happen, does it? But the story contained truth. Because remember, Israel was looking for a king. And God was like, I'm your king. Hello. And they were still looking for a king. And so that's why this parable was uh, told. So again, we see that just because it's a parable doesn't mean it's a true story, but that it contains truth. Okay. But, Jesus was teaching about death, right? This parable, okay, say it's not a true story. Maybe there wasn't really a guy named Lazarus and a rich man, but he was teaching about death, right? Amen. You think so? <laughs> I think he just woke up. Uh, Paul was taught about death as well, didn't he? Okay? The reason I bring those two up is because they're the two that are always brought up. I want to look at them. The first one is rich, the rich man and Lazarus versus the real Lazarus. Okay? We know that the story of, rich, uh, of Lazarus and the rich man, Lazarus dies and is taken to Abraham's bosom. And we'll look at the, the, the parable in a minute. And then the rich man goes to hell. I mean, two minutes after you die, just like my cousin said, right? But what about the real story of Lazarus, which we know is not a parable? What happened there? What does Jesus say about Lazarus' death, the, the man who actually died, the real Lazarus? What does he say? He says, these things said he, and after that he said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. Whoa, sorry. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. He didn't say he went somewhere. He didn't say Abraham's bosom. He didn't say angels caught him up. He said he's asleep. In fact, 
he was, it was, he said it in such a way that the disciples misunderstood him. Because look what it said. But I go that I may...